Good evening, everybody. CEO of Galway Hospice. On behalf of the team at the hospice this evening, I'd like to welcome everybody here in the church in Edinburgh and everybody joining us virtually from home to our remembrance service. Tonight, we're remembering the 94 people who passed away in the care of Galway Hospice between the 1st of October and the 31st of December last year. I hope that this evening's service will offer you a safe, supportive space where to, you can gather together with hospice staff, either virtually or in person here in Renmore, to take a moment to remember those that you have loved and lost. Remembering those that we have loved is a very important part of grieving. We can remember them in conversations with friends, with family. We can remember them in special places. And then we can remember them in evenings like this evening. I came across a poem titled Remember Me by the poet Margaret Mead, and I think it sort of captures a lot of um, what we're trying to achieve with this evening's service, and it goes as follows. I cannot speak, but I can listen. I cannot be seen, but I can be heard. So as you stand upon a shore gazing at a beautiful sea, as you look upon a flower and admire its simplicity, remember me. Remember me in your heart, in your thoughts, in your memories of the times we loved, the times we cried, the times we fought, the times we laughed. For if you always think of me, I will never have gone. This evening we're gathering together as a community who has loved. Together we took a journey to set out some of the most beloved people in your lives to be cared for by the hospice team and with their support to die surrounded by compassion dignity and love. During this evening's service, we will light candles to remember your loved one, and we will also remember them by name. We will allow the light from the candles to pour into the holes in our hearts, and we will in turn share in that light. David and Peter from our pastoral care team will lead this evening's service, and they'll be assisted by Caroline from our medical social work team. And we also have a number of bereavement volunteers who are assisting with the, some of the readings. Our music this evening is provided by Claire and James, and I hope you enjoy this evening's service, and I'm go now going to hand over to Claire for our first piece of music. <laughs> Casting its shadows here. And on this morning, bright though it be, I feel no shadows near. to me following all of my ways may I be always close to you following all your ways Lord I watch the sunlight shine through the clouds, warming the earth below. And at the midday, life seems to say. I feel your brightness near me. For you always close to me, following all my ways.
<clears throat> I came across a quote not too long ago from a Moroccan writer called Anwar Ushad, and I thought it appropriate for this evening. And he said, when someone is mourning, there is absolutely nothing that you can say to alleviate their pain. Just sit with them, hold their hands, be present and compassionate. And that quote in turn reminded me of a, a short story about a four-year-old girl whose next door neighbor was an elderly man and his wife had recently died. And one day the little girl noticed the old man sitting alone on his porch outside the house crying. So she went over to his house and she sat beside him for ages. And her mother looked out the kitchen window and she noticed her from across the road and saw herself and the daughter, or saw the daughter and the old man sitting together. And when the child came home a good while later, the mother asked the daughter what it was that she said to the old man and what they had talked about. And the little girl replied, we didn't talk about anything, Mammy. I just sat there and helped him to cry. And if you'd like to use that story as an analogy, all of you here this evening and those of you who are tuned in online are a little bit like the old man sitting on the porch, crying and mourning the death of your loved one that you've come here to remember. And the little girl stands for us here in Galway Hospice. There's not much that we can do for you or say to you that's going to ease your pain or take away your sadness tonight. All that we in the hospice can do is to arrange this coming together this evening, as I said, both in person and online, to be here for you, to sit beside you as you cry and grieve, to lend a listening ear and to offer ongoing bereavement support if needed, as my uh, medical social work colleague Caroline will talk about later. And when you placed your loved one in our care, we here in the Galway Hospice Foundation made a commitment to you, their loved ones, to provide them with the best possible care for the remainder of their lives. But we also made a commitment to your loved one at the time to mind you, their loved ones, after they died and to help you get back on their feet, which is what, the, which is what they would have wanted you to do. And that's why we're here this evening. And hopefully this evening's service will go some way towards achieving that for you. And tonight, all of you are taking another huge step on the grieving journey. And if you're a person of faith, then you can take great comfort and hope from the promise of God that one day, many years from now, please God, you'll all be reunited again with your loved ones who have died in a place where there's no more suffering, no more sickness, no more tears, and no more goodbyes. And if you have questions or doubts about faith or in God's existence because of the death of your loved one, then you can take great hope and comfort as well as because some of the greatest people who ever lived and some of the greatest saints that ever lived doubted God's existence at times as well. And even Jesus himself, when he was hanging on the cross, felt abandoned when he shouted out, my God, why have you forsaken me? It's totally normal to have questions and to have doubts. And if you're an atheist, non-believer, or if you don't know what you believe or don't believe in, then you can also take great comfort and hope in the fact that you're still very much connected and joined to your loved one. And it's exactly because you miss them and are brokenhearted that you're connected because the bond of love transcends everything. They're still alive in your mind and in your heart. And I find the words of the American writer Mitch Album very appropriate. He said, death ends a life, not a relationship. All the love you created is still there. All the memories are still there. You live on in the hearts of everyone you have touched and nurtured while you were here. And this sermon this evening is a multi-denominational service that's inclusive for people of all faiths and none. And it's reflective of the different backgrounds that the patients and families we care for come from. And as I said, the service is our attempt here in Galway Hospice to continue to reach out to you and to accompany you through this time. And like the little girl in the story, we're here to sit beside you as you cry and mourn for this short while together. And we're also here to remind you that neither you nor your loved one who died in our care is forgotten. And so what brings us here together this evening is not ultimately grief, it's love. And so now we pause to remember your mother or your father, your husband, wife or partner, your son or your daughter, your sister or brother, uncle or aunt, your grandchild, your grandparent, your relation, 
your friend, your loved one. And I invite you to join with me in our service on page four. And on the table of remembrance here in front of us, we have candles, a um, hundred has said 94, one for each one of your loved ones who have died remembering tonight. And we have three large candles in the center, which represent the three areas of hospice care, the inpatient unit, the day care, and community care. And these candles symbolize the link between us, the hospice staff, who as a team care for your loved ones and yourselves, the relatives of those for whom we cared for. And as we light these candles now, as we begin our ceremony, we do so to remember your loved one and indeed yourselves. So this evening we're going to remember 194 names. We will read the names alphabetically throughout this evening's service. If any family member, care or loved one would like to join us to light the candle, feel free when the name is called to come up towards the altar. So the first of the remembrance for the names, Caroline Alfredson. Charles Allaire. Michael Bailey, Oliver Barrett, Jeanette Barry, Vincent Berrigan, Bernard Burkett, Elizabeth Bryan, Bernadette Broderick, Michael Brody. Nelly Brown, Norina Brown, Tom Burke, James Burke, John Byrne. Thomas Cahill, Finian Carey, Mary Carr, Agnes Coakley, Mary Coleman, Sophia Coleman, John Keneally, Barbara Keneally, James Connolly, Nora Connolly, Billy Cosgrove, Martin Costello, Edward Coughlin, Assumpta Craven, Anne Crow, Frank Crow, Elizabeth Cuff. Elizabeth Curran, Mary Daly, Joan de Cruz, Kathleen Delaney, Alan Denson, Rita Duran, Thomas Dolan, Bridie Donahue. Jim Doyle, Brendan Duffy, Isabel Duggan, James Duggan, Margaret Egan, Bridget Egan, Tom Egan. Nancy Egan.
We are now going to read the lighting of candle reflection. If people would like to join with me in reading this on page five. I haven't forgotten you, even though it's been some time now since I've seen your face, touched your hand, heard your voice. You are with me all the time. I used to think you left me. I know better now. You come to me. Sometimes in fleeting moments, I feel your presence close by, but I still miss you. And nothing, no person, no joy, no accomplishment, no distraction can fill the gaping hole your absence has left in my life. But mixed together with all my sadness, there is a great joy for having known you. I want to thank you for the time we shared, for the love you gave, for the wisdom you spread. Thank you for the magnificent moments and the ordinary ones too. There was beauty in our simplicity, holiness in our unspectacular days. And I will carry the lessons you taught me always. Your life has ended, but your light can never be extinguished. It continues to shine upon me, even on the darkest nights and illuminates my way. Prayer. <clears throat> Reach out and touch us, O Lord, that we may be filled with the strength to stand alone. Place your hand on our shoulder that we may feel your presence ever near. Walk by our side in times of despair that we may reach out to you in hope. Enter our hearts when we are sad that we may feel the warmth of your love and acceptance. Be with us when we feel alone that we may sense your compassion and understanding. Keep us close to you, that we may find comfort and peace in the nearness of your unfailing love. Help us to put our trust entirely in you in the days that lie ahead, for we know that you are always with us. Amen. Oh, the second part of our remembering of names. And again, if your loved one is called out, you'd like to like a candle, please feel free to come up. And so we remember Sean Fahey, Martin Fahey, Christopher Fahey, John Fahey, John Fallon, Patrick Fallon, Patrick Fergus, Michael Finlan, Kathleen Finn, Florence Finney, David Fitzgerald, Monica Flaherty, John Flanagan, Francis Flannery, Mary Flannery, Mary Fleming, Anne Flynn, Austin Ford, Frank Ford, Matty Ford, Anne Freeney, Martina Garvey, Eamon Gately, Jackie Gately, Seamus Gagan, Elizabeth Geraghty, Catherine Gillespie, Michael Glynn, Nicole Graney, Peter Graney, Geoffrey Green, Joseph Green, Mark Griffin, Dennis Griffin, Thomas Griffin, Michael Healy, Michael Henley, Koch Higgins, Anne Higgins, Annie Hogan, Liam Hines, Millicent Hines, Sheila Jacobs, 
Mary Joyce, Porrick Joyce, Margaret Joyce, Mary Kane, John Kearns, Francis Keegan, James Kerrin, Mary Killalay, Valerie Kinsler, and Evelyn Knight. St. John's Gospel. <clears throat> Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, will have the light of life. The light is with you for a little longer. Walk while you have the light, so that the darkness may not overcome you. If you walk in the darkness, you do not know where you are going. I have come as the light into the world, so that everyone who believes in me should not remain in darkness. This is the word of the Lord. Third list of names, Mary Lacey, Noreen Lally, Sean Landy, Friday Lernahan, Mary Long, Michael Lachnan, Kathleen Lowry, Bridget Lydon, Brendan Linus. Patrick Lynch, Robert Madden, Mary Madden, James Mannion, Francis Mannion, Nellie Martin, Anna Martin, Angela McDermott, Fintan McDonnell, Mary McDonnell, Catherine McAvoy, Vincent McGaugh, Brenda McLennan, Anne McGrail, John McGuinness, Margaret McInerney, Mary McInerney, Peter Meehan, Teresa Mockler, Michael Malloy, Dermot Maloney, Patrick Monaghan, Marianne Monaghan, Anita Moran, Nora Moran, John Morgan, Anne Moriarty, Martina Morris, Fiona Morrissey, Patrick Moylan, Patrick Mullins, Liam Mulrooney, Margaret Mulvaney, Thomas Murphy, Philomena Murphy, John Murphy, Desmond Murray, Carmel Murray, Liam Murray, George Murray.
rising of the sun and it's going down, we remember them. In the blowing of the wind and in the chill of the winter, we remember them. In the opening of the buds and in the warmth of summer, we remember them. In the rustlings of the leaves and in the beauty of the autumn, we remember them. In the beginning of the year and when it ends, we remember them. When we are weary and in need of strength, we remember them. When we are lost and sick of heart, we remember them. When we have joys, when we yearn to share, we remember them. As long as we shall live, they too shall live, for now they are a part of us as we remember them. Hey. 
expect you, troubles neglect you, heaven expect you. It's time to go home. May you always have plenty. Your glass never empty. I know in your belly you're never alone. May your tears come from laughing. Find friends worth having. With every year passing, they're worth more than gold. When you win, would stay humble. Smile more than crumble, and knowing you stumble, you're never alone. Never alone, never alone. I will be happy, beat of your heart, and you face the unknown. Stay with you, baby. You're never alone. Well, I have to be honest. As much as I want it, I'm not going to promise. The cold winds won't blow. So when hard times have found you and your fears surround you, wrap my love around you. You're never alone. And now we have the final list of names. So again, if you're a family member, um, if you're a family member and you'd like to come up and light a candle, feel free to do so. Maura Nocton. Martin Nocton. Anne Nyland. Patrick Noon. Mary O'Brien, Christina O'Brien, Martin O'Brien, Matt O'Connell, Katrina O'Connell, Dahi O'Connor, Richard O'Donovan, Derry O'Dowd, Magdalena Oleska, Seamus O'Neill, James O'Sullivan, Ethna O'Toole, John Quinn, Joan Ray, Eileen Regan, Bridget Riley, 
Margaret Relihan, Raymond Rowe, Margaret Savage, Thomas Scahill, Raymond Schley, Martin Sherry, Mary Sice, Margaret Smith, Maureen Steed, Bridget Stevens, Catherine Sweeney, Michael Thornton, Sabina Tierney, William Tracy, David Walsh, Mary Walsh, Michael Ward, Bernard Ward, Patrick Ward, Breach Ward, Thomas Ward, Tom Ward, and John Ward. name wasn't called out, please feel free to come up and light a candle. A reflection on hope. No matter how deeply hurt we are, no matter that life seems unfair, we shouldn't quit striving when all seems lost, should never give way to our despair. Frustrated and angry and so alone, emotions in turmoil and pain seeking to shun the cold, hard world, yet daring to hope once again. Hope is the essence when we have the will, which inspires us with get up and go. It opens up highways and byways once more, uplifting depression and woe. Hope is our anchor extended to all, most surely a gift from above which holds us comfort on life's rough seas through his wondrous compassion and love. Good evening, everyone. My name is Caroline, and before we come to the end of this evening's service, I'd like to share a few words with you all on behalf of the Bereavement Support Service and the Medical Social Work Department here at Galway Hospice. I would like to thank you all again for joining this evening's service. As Dave mentioned earlier, we are all here to not only remember your loved one, but also all of you as you journey through this difficult time. 
Sometimes it can be difficult to understand our grief as we learn to cope with it and adapt to a significant loss in our life. Grief is a natural and unfortunately necessary process after the loss of a loved one. It's also a very personal experience. Just as your relationship with your loved one was special and unique to you, so too is your grief for them. Sometimes we might compare ourselves to others who are grieving, whether that's a friend or a neighbor who has had a similar bereavement or other people within our own families who have lost the same loved person. You may yourself notice that you and your family members appear to grieve in different ways. And sometimes this can be confusing, but is also very normal as no two people will experience grief in the same way. We are all novices when it comes to grief and dealing with the unpredictability of it can be quite overwhelming and frightening at times. We may experience many emotions even throughout a day, ranging from sadness and anger, confusion, guilt and yearning for our loved ones. Sometimes we may feel numbness and unable to tap into our emotions. It is also common to experience physical changes when we are grieving, such as pain, restlessness, difficulty concentrating, or even remembering, or changes to our sleep or appetite. These feelings we experience, both physically and mentally, can sometimes make us question ourselves. It is important to acknowledge that grief is not an illness or something that can be cured or gotten over. It is a natural reaction to the loss of a loved one. And the emotions we experience, although painful, are a normal part of grief. We may feel that we are prepared for the death of a loved one and our actual grief response may take us by surprise. We may also feel that there are certain steps or stages that we need to get through and may become impatient or angry with ourselves and put pressure on ourselves to overcome these intense feelings. Equally, equally, we may feel that at some point we have to put our loss behind us and move on with our lives. But grieving is not about moving on or forgetting our loved ones. There is no specific timeline for healing. There's no beginning, there's no middle, there's no end. Our grief does not shrink as the weeks, the months and the years go by. It is something that becomes part of us. And over time and time, we can allow ourselves space in our lives for other things. It's important that we give ourselves permission to grieve at our own pace and are often patient with ourselves as we try and find a way to navigate this loss. One way we can learn to cope with our loss is to share our feelings with our friends and family. It can be helpful to talk about your loved one who has died, about your memories, your feelings and your relationship with them. However, not all of us will find words for our loss and may find other ways that work. This could be through channeling our feelings towards other activities such as music, reading, podcasts, or sometimes journaling. Engaging in self-care activities such as exercise, mindfulness and hobbies can provide a sense of solace and distraction for our grief. Allowing yourself to experience moments of joy is also important. While for most of us, we can learn to cope with the support of family and friends, some of us may feel more help is needed or somewhere neutral to share your feelings of loss. If you are finding the impact of your loss very difficult, supports are available to you from our bereavement support service in Galway Hospice. We provide individual bereavement support here in the hospice for adults and children. And we also provide support over the telephone. We also plan for adult and children's groups during the year. And we also coordinate a fortnightly walking group specifically for those who are bereaved. If you feel that you or a loved one may benefit from some extra support, please do reach out to us in the Galway Hospice and the Bereavement Support Service. This support is free of charge and it's confidential and there is no time limit when this can be accessed. 
Finally, we can only do our best each day and how we manage and cope can change dramatically from one day to the next. Try to be patient with yourself and be kind as you journey through this vulnerable and difficult time in your life. And so we have now our concluding reflection. There comes a time in our life when we must say goodbye to someone we love, someone whose memory will always remain in our hearts. As we grieve their loss, we know that they can never be replaced for each person is truly unique. May we have the strength to accept and understand our feelings of loss and the pain we now experience. May we be blessed with good people to support and help us in our time of need. And finally, may we find healing and peace in the months and the years to come. And I invite Mary now to conclude our service for us. I just have a few words of thanks before we finish up our service this evening. Firstly, a very sincere thank you to all of you for joining us this evening and thank you for those who joined us virtually from home. As Caroline and David have said, if we can support you at any stage of your grief journey, please do not hesitate to contact the hospice and reach out to us. We'll continue to be there to support you whenever you need us. If you have any suggestions about this evening's service and how we could improve it, we'd love to hear from you. And we've included a feedback form in the invitation letter we would have sent out to you. We also have some QR codes on posters at the back of the church here. And if you scan those, it'll take you to the link, to the link for our feedback form. We're recording the service this evening and it will be available uh, to you for the next two weeks. And the link that you used to, you can access the service with the link that was in the letter that was sent out to you. Um, some of our volunteers will be at the back of the church here this evening and we have some hospice remembrance candles so if any family member would like to take them to I suppose in remembrance of this evening um, please just go to one of the volunteers. Um, I'd like to thank Gary and the team from GK Media who've helped us broadcast the service this evening and to, to record it. And a huge thanks to the team who've set up the service this evening. I think they've done a great job and it's been very special. And I think the music this evening um, from Claire and James has absolutely hugely contributed to the service. So a huge sincere thanks to you for being here and joining us. The, the pieces you picked have been absolutely spot on and I think have really added to the service this evening. Um, lastly, um, it wouldn't be hospice if we weren't inviting you back for a cup of tea or coffee. So for anybody who would like to avail of it, we will have some re refreshments available in the dining room and the hospice. And that's just to the rear of the church. There's a little lane way. And if you go down halfway, it'll bring you out to the entrance to the hospice and our receptionist will direct you towards the dining room. Um, I'm going to finish up with just a few words from the poet Christina Curra. Um, and it goes, remember me when I am gone but not with sorrow, pain, and grief. Think of me as a turning leaf that in winter falls from its branch to be born again in spring and live forever in your heart. I hope you enjoyed this evening's service, and I'll now hand over to Claire and James for our final piece of music. Thank you very much. Say that reassuring 
It's the spirits we knew Here in God I choked Oh my Christmas I see an island You're on the pea I hear you crying the misty air You look so lonely And there's no one dear Wish I could hold you Wish you were here Slán o Without you is Oh, my Christmas. 